so this is where I'll be leaving the knife before heat treatment. It's probably about 80% ground. You never want to take your knife to final dimensions before hardening and tempering. So let's heat treat it. Make sure she hardened correctly. This ashy gray sort of look in spots, and the fact that the scale came off in the quench, that's usually a good sign. So let's just double check here. Got my best file. These scratches are just the scale, which is pretty loose out of the quench. So she seems good to me. Now we'll try. I'm just going to take some of the scale off with some 400 grit paper. I already started doing it with a scotch right, but the stuff is pretty sticky. Uh, this won't affect the grind or the finish or anything, but it'll let us see the tempering colors a little better. and two tempering cycles has passed and we get this beautiful coppery brassy bronzy type color on the blade the color can in theory tell you a little bit but it's really not that exact so I just like to see uh, the color to make sure tempering has really happened type of deal it really doesn't tell us much though but I think it looks really cool What I'm doing right now is I'm bringing down the, the bevel to final dimensions. Right now I'm using a 240 grit belt and I'm just eyeing this edge thickness and evening it out right now, bringing it down to essentially what would be considered a zero edge before I actually put the cutting edge on it. Alright, so now I'm going to start hand sanding the knife. I'm not going to show too much of this. I don't want to bore anybody. It's a pretty boring looking process, but hand sanding is great because it lets you get uh, rid of very minor issues in your grind, like this little blip, where I may have moved my hand just a millimeter of, or two for just half a second and has this small facet here. So hand sanding is great for that. I'll be using a wooden backer. This is a just an old piece of curly maple I was testing something on. And I will be starting with 220 grit black zirconium paper.
now that the blade is done, it's time to start thinking about the handle. I've got a lot of synthetics, a lot of linen micarta, and some G10, but I'm ruling it out because you can get synthetic handles anywhere these days. I've got about 8 board feet of curly maple. I'm a huge fan of it, my dad likes it too, but it's not special enough for this knife. I've got a bunch of red oak, got some Bolivian rosewood, uh, barberry bush wood, I've got a lot of hickory, black walnut, some nice black walnut. Got some stabilized maple burl. I don't think it's right for this knife either. So that leaves me these two. Got some desert ironwood. And a wood all the way from Australia called Ringed Gigi. Ironwood. Or Gigi. Ironwood. Or did you? I'm gonna go with the iron wood. I've never seen a wood like this before. It's just awesome. Now that's crazy. This stuff is so hard, it makes chips like a metal. Eh, I don't think this is gonna cut the ironwood. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. It's still wood. trying not to show too much of the handle work. I have lots and lots of handle videos, but I just wanted to point out how beautiful this wood is already. And I'm using a 100 grit belt right now, zirconia belt. And I've never seen a wood look this good with that coarse of a grit.
so ends this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I really enjoyed making this knife. And I'm very, very pleased with how the ironwood came out. It's probably my best knife to date. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with me and watching me build it. And yes, I did sharpen it using my homemade precision sharpening system. I just didn't include that in the video because I made that thing way too big and it's hard to fit in the frame. But as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd be so kind, please hit subscribe, tap that notification button, give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Merry Christmas, Dad. I hope you like it.